White House. You have. I stand with you. I support our police. I support our sheriffs. And we support the men and women of law enforcement. Right now, many communities in America are facing a public safety crisis. Murders in 2015 experienced their largest single-year increase in nearly half a century. In 2016, murders in large cities continued to climb by double digits. In many of our biggest cities, 2016 brought an increase in the number of homicides, rapes, assaults, and shootings. In Chicago, more than 4,000 people were shot last year alone. And the rate so far this year has been even higher. What is going on in Chicago? We cannot allow this to continue. We've allowed too many young lives to be claimed, and you see that. You see that all over. Claimed by gangs and too many neighborhoods to be crippled by violence and fear. 60% of murder victims under the age of 22 are African American. This is a national tragedy, and it requires national action. This violence must end, and we must all work together to end it. Whether a child lives in Detroit, Chicago, Baltimore, or anywhere in our country, he or she has the right to grow up in safety and in peace. No one in America should be punished because of the city where he or she is born. Every child in America should be able to play outside without fear, walk home without danger, and attend a school without being worried about drugs or gangs or violence. So many lives and so many people have been cut short. Their potential, their life has been cut short. So much potential has been sidelined. And so many dreams have been shattered and broken, totally broken. It's time to stop the drugs from pouring into our country. And by the way, we will do that. And I will say this, General, now Secretary Kelly, will be the man to do it, and we will give him a wall, and it will be a real wall, and a lot of things will happen very positively for your cities, your states. Believe me, the wall is getting designed right now. A lot of people say, oh, oh, Trump was only kidding with the wall. I wasn't kidding. I don't kid. I don't kid. I, I watch this, and they say I was kidding. No, I don't kid. I don't kid about things like that, I can tell you. No, we will have a wall. It will be a great wall, and it will do a lot of, will be a big help. Just ask Israel about walls. Do walls work? Just ask Israel. They work, if it's properly done. It's time to dismantle the gangs terrorizing our citizens. And it's time to ensure that every young American can be raised in an environment of decency, dignity, love, and support. You have asked for the resources, tools, and support you need to get the job done. We will do whatever we can to help you meet those demands. That includes a zero-tolerance policy for acts of violence against law enforcement. We all see what happens. We all see what happens and what's been happening to you. It's not fair. We must protect those who protect us. The number of officers shot and killed in the line of duty last year increased by 56 percent from the year before. Last year in Dallas, police officers were targeted for ex execution. Think of this. Who ever heard of this? They were targeted for execution. Twelve were shot and five were killed. These heroic officers died as they lived, protecting the innocent, rushing into danger, risking their lives for people they did not even know, but for people that they were determined to save. Hats off to you people. 
These slain officers are an eternal monument to all of the men and women who protect our streets and serve our public. We will not forget them, and we will not forget all of the others who made that final sacrifice in the line of duty. God has blessed our nation to put these heroes among us. Those who serve in law enforcement work long hours. You work long hours. I know so many sheriffs, so many chiefs, so many police who work long hours and dangerous hours oftentimes in difficult conditions and for not that much pay relative to what you're doing. They do it because they care. We must work with them, not against them. They're working against you. For many years, they've been working against you. We must support them, not undermine them. And instead of division and disunity, and which is so much disunity, we must build bridges of partnership and of trust. Those who demonize law enforcement or who use the actions of a few to discredit the service of many are hurting the very people they say that they want to help. When policing is reduced, crime is increased, and our poorest citizens suffer the most. And I see it all the time. When the number of police goes down, crime goes up. To build needed trust between law enforcement and the communities they serve, it is not enough for us to merely talk to each other. We must listen to each other. All of us share the view that those in uniform must be held to the highest possible standard of conduct. It's so important. You are the role models to young Americans all across this country, many of whom want to go into law enforcement, many of whom want to be a sheriff or a police chief, many of whom. They have great respect for you, tremendous respect. You don't even realize it, but I will tell you, they have great respect and admiration for the people in this room and the people that you represent. And don't let anyone ever tell you different. Don't let the dishonest media try and convince you that it's different than that, because it's not. That is why our commitment to law and law enforcement also includes ensuring that we're giving departments the resources they need to train, recruit, and retain talent. As part of our commitment to safe communities, we will also work to address the mental health crisis. Prison should not be a substitute for treatment. We will fight to increase access to life-saving treatment to battle the addiction to drugs, which is afflicting our nation like never, ever before, ever. I've been here two weeks. I've met a lot of law enforcement officials. Yesterday, brought them into the Oval Office. I asked a group, what impact do drugs have in terms of a percentage on crime? I said 75 to 80 percent. It's pretty sad. We're going to stop the drugs from pouring in. We're going to stop those drugs from poisoning our youth, from poisoning our people. We're going to be ruthless in that fight. We have no choice. And we're going to take that fight to the drug cartels and work to liberate our communities from their terrible grip of violence. You have the power and knowledge to tell General Kelly, now Secretary Kelly, who the illegal immigrant gang members are. Now, you have that power. Because you know them. You're there. You're local. You know the illegals. You know them by their first name. You know them by their nicknames. You have that power. The federal government can never be that precise. But you're in the neighborhoods. You know the bad ones. You know the good ones. I want you to turn in the bad ones. Call Secretary Kelly's representative. And we'll get them out of our country and bring them back where they came from, and we'll do it fast. You have to call up the federal government, Homeland Security, 
because so much of the problems — you look at Chicago and you look at other places — so many of the problems are caused by gang members, many of whom are not even legally in our country. And we will work with you on the front lines to keep America safe from terrorism, which is what I began this with. Terrorism, a tremendous threat, far greater than people in our country understand. Believe me, I've learned a lot in the last two weeks, and terrorism is a far greater threat than the people of our country understand. But we're going to take care of it. We're going to win. We're going to take care of it, folks. Let today be the beginning of a great national partnership. Let today serve as a great call to action. And let this moment represent a new beginning in relations between law enforcement and our communities. I want you to know the American public totally stands with you. I want you to know the American people support you. I want you to know how proud we are, truly proud, to know you. We applaud your efforts. We thank you for your service. And we promise that you will always find an open door at the White House, an open invitation to our great cops and sheriffs nationwide. They're great people. You are great people. Thank you. God bless you, and God bless America. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. of American energy dominance. First, we will begin to revive and expand our nuclear energy sector, which produces clean, renewable, and emissions-free energy. NRC regulations specifically spell out prohibitions against fluid-filled reactors to more than one megawatt. A complete review of U.S. nuclear energy policy. A lot of energy consumption is largely industrial processes. Unbelievably optimized process. So besides your scrap material input, what's your next largest cost on production? Electricity. Electricity. This is a recycling facility. This is a sorting facility. Sorting is labor intensive. Recycling is energy intensive. Most people don't understand everything you look at, touch, feel, anything is tangible. There's energy behind it. A lot of it. Why nuclear energy? Why molten salt reactor? Why China is the first one to eat the crap? That's Chinese saying. And they are well funded and well staffed. It's very compelling work. The Chinese are definitely in the lead right now on this. China Expo is not for consume, it's for production. President Obama in a State of the Union address said A new generation of safe, clean nuclear power plants in this country. And both sides of the aisle, Republicans and Democrats, stood up like he saluted the military. We're all at Oak Ridge. The morning that we showed up, one of the Oak Ridge guys came in with an announcement from the Chinese Academy of Science. We are going to do this. We're going to own the IP. So you would think our government would say, maybe you shouldn't keep giving away this information. The current system incentivizes reactor designers to develop their first projects outside of the United States. It's going to preclude us from certain countries until they come to their senses. We do feel that we have a competitive advantage by pursuing this technology in Canada. China is. India is. The Czech Republic bought fly for pennies on the dollar from Oak Ridge National Laboratories. We basically gave it away. There is no way for us to move beyond the laboratory scale work that we're currently doing. We want more than anything to do this in the U.S. How is it that China will deliver this system and not the U.S.? 